Well, the visit of US President Barack Obama to Australia has been dominating the media this week. Sky News among the broadcasters providing wall-to-wall -wall coverage. So for a behind-the-scenes glimpse at what's been going on in the press pack, we're joined by Sky News political reporter Laura Jays. Laura, just how stage-managed was that presidential news conference compared to what you're used to? Well, for a start, it was very hard to get into. Uh, not only did you have to be a part of the press gallery, you had to have a national media uh, visits pass, and then you had to apply to actually go and attend the press conference. And then after that, you had to apply to ask a question. This is uh, how stage managed it was. There was only two questions allowed from uh, the Australian press pack and two questions from the American uh, press pack. And it was only given an allegation allocated uh, half an hour, probably ran over a little bit, but that's pretty unusual, especially here in Parliament House. You know, if Julie Gillard usually uh, holds a press conference, uh, not only do journalists ask questions, but if they're not getting uh, the answer they're, they're looking for, they usually interject halfway through. Now, there was none of that. Uh, we had two questions from Phil Hudson and uh, Mark Riley from the Seven Network as well. Uh, those questions were kind of layered in the way they were asked, uh, as you can imagine, you know, there was kind of three questions in one there. Uh, they're all directed pretty much to Barack Obama. Uh, Julie Gillard had some comments there. But interestingly enough, uh, from the American press pack, uh, they weren't uh, really interested in any of the domestic politics. All the questions directed to Barack Obama was about uh, Europe and uh, a look at the global economy at the moment. And Laura, do you know anything about the size of the visiting uh, US press contingent? And do they fly on their own plane so they're there when the president arrives? Then likewise, do they fly out prior to him so they're in Darwin when he gets there? Yes, well, I believe that uh, there were some journalists on uh, the Air Force One uh, when uh, Air Force One did land yesterday, but also, as you can imagine, there's probably about 100 journalists uh, travelling uh, with the White House, part of the White House press corps, so they have their own plane. And uh, I know that there was some uh, spare seats to go uh, from Canberra uh, to Darwin if any of the Australian journalists wanted to go on there, and it was $5,000 for a seat. <laughs> um, so I don't know anyone who took up that offer. Uh, but um, yeah, so pretty expensive flight to Darwin, quick. <laughs> and you don't have to go uh, through any other cities, but yeah, quite expensive as well. Look, as I say, about 100 uh, journalists, we spoke to many of them uh, on Sky News this morning trying to get a different perspective of just what the, uh, the press was looking for. I'm sure there was a few corny jokes about, uh, you know, Australianisms and all that kind of thing, but uh, they have taken over the National Press Club here in Canberra. There's a lot of donuts, a lot of TV screens, <laughs> and everyone had a coffee in their hands. It is a big but Most of them, I have to say, yeah, most of them were watching Sky News, but a lot of them just had an eye on um, CNN and uh, what was going on uh, in uh, the uh, US media at the same time, I guess, trying to get a bit of perspective reporting uh, in conjunction with what's uh, going on back home. I might just mention one more thing uh, with the Prime Minister's press conference. Usually, we've, when we've seen other leaders, this is uh, held in the Prime Minister's courtyard, uh, that beautiful courtyard, usually there's the flags and she comes out those double doors. You, you all know the scene, but this time, not the case. It had to be hold, held in a committee room, uh, which is... Um in the middle of Parliament House because of, of course, security concerns. It was uh, too open. Oh, well, there's four walls around it, but of course it's open to the sky and because there was no roof, uh, the security just wouldn't have it. Laura, great to get your insights. Thanks so much. <laughs> Now, Seven West Media Chairman Kerry Stokes has told the company's AGM this week that market conditions remain challenging. He does say that first half earnings before interest and tax are expected at more than $300 million. Also this week, the Fairfax family's company, Marinia, sold its remaining stake in Fairfax Media for a big discount. Well, with more on that and the rest of the media sector's performance this week, here's Chris Weston from IG Markets. Yeah, good afternoon, Bridie. Uh, it's been a, a, an interesting week on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the media space. I mean, first of all, you've got to look at Fairfax. It's probably been the big story of the week. The stock's down 10% on the week, trading around 83 and a half cents. Uh, obviously, the Fairfax selling out their 9.2%, 9.7% stake in the company, around about 85 cents. I think that equates to about $197 million worth. Usually, when you see this overhangs removed from a stock, it becomes quite a good buying opportunity. But given the nature of the, uh, the investor who's actually sold out, uh, the market's really taking this as a, a net negative. Uh, I suppose the next thing you're looking at is
is, is the recovery that we have seen in the US economy this week and over the last month or so. Uh, that should be very, very good for News Corp, who are very much leveraged to what's going on there. The stock's actually flat for the week, hasn't really responded, but of course we know that they've got their own internal dramas going on there. Uh, we have looked very closely at the SMI data. Uh, this is the advertising or the advertising bookings that are coming through that make up about 55 to, to 60 percent of the total advertising spend. Uh, that was down about 1.2 percent in October. I think the real shining light out of this was that advertising bookings uh, through radio were up about 15 percent in October, which is very, very strong. Should be good for Southern Cross uh, or stereo, but the stock's relatively flat on the week. Now, if you break it down into the other spaces, we did actually see that advertising spend dropping about 3.6 percent in over out of homes. Uh, total magazines fell somewhere in the region about 7.4 percent, and total newspapers dropped 10.2 percent, as well as free to air Metro, which was down 1.8 percent. Now, all in all, APN down about 4.5 percent for the week. I think the interesting thing that we took away from this uh, this this, uh, this uh, SMI data uh, was that CBA have downgraded their uh, advertising spend assumptions for 2012 from 1.5% growth uh, to flat and as a result they've downgraded 10 from a buy recommendation to a hold recommendation and taken their price target down 13% to 97 cents. Uh, so that's been a very interesting scenario that we've played through. Goldman Sachs actually on the other hand have suggested this, this plays into their forecast of 2% uh, declines in advertising spend in the first half of this year and didn't down the grade anything as well. So a little bit of weakness in most of the stocks, Fairfax obviously being the big story this week. Now in the radio sector, questions continue to hang over the future of Melbourne Talkback Radio. Though joint venture partner Macquarie Radio did seem hopeful about the loss-making radio station at the company's AGM today. James, what does the future hold for MTR? We had a bit of speculation in the magazine out this week that look, they were trying to sort out a, a financial settlement with the two partners, uh, Macquarie and Pacific Star. But from Russell Tate's commentary today at the AGM, uh, he seems to be saying the JV will continue and maybe even a stripped down version of 3MTR, maybe 3GB if you like. But the um, talk down in Melbourne was that as soon as the deal's worked out between the two parties, they'll flip it back to what it used to be, which is 3MP, a music station that's still on the digital platform. I think it's called MyMP there, so that we see, might see some music station. That would certainly be the cheaper option, so I still think that might happen. I just want to ask you as well about uh, the ACMA revising commercial radio standards, but there are fears about over-regulation of uh, advertising. Yeah, well, they want to cut out some stuff but strengthen other things. I mean, this was last overhaul big time after the sort of cash for comment, if you like, just over a decade ago. Um, but radio feels sort of hard done by that they're, they're not allowed to integrate advertising into their programming. Like, say, television is. There's sort of no restrictions on, you know, product placement, um, sponsored segments on shows, stuff like that, but radio isn't allowed to do it. So probably be justified there. Yeah. All right, let's just quickly have a look at the radio ratings. This is week 46, free to air first, X Factor Tuesday in top spot, followed by Underbelly Razor and 60 Minutes in third, Doc Martin again in the top 10 for ABC One. Let's just turn the page there and uh, X Factor again Monday night in number six spot. Let's have a look at subscriptions, top 10 for week 46. Cricket, yeah. And just turning the First page test there, in South Africa. Uh, you can see Rove that. still up there among you know one of the top two or three non-sporting programs. So. James, a lot of speculation about changes happening uh, amongst all the, the TV hosts of various programs of various networks. Yeah. What can you tell us? Only a week to go, really, before it's sort of summer break, if you like, for the for the programmers and, and the, the, they sort of re, re look at their schedules for next year. Sonia Kruger rumoured to be moving to nine, leaving seven. Um, hosted Dan co-host of Dancing with the Stars, maybe as a host of Big Brother, maybe as a replacement for Kerry Ann in mornings. Ten still trying to sort out their new breakfast show. Carrie Bickmore was apparently one of the targets to get that but she really didn't want to move from prime time to breakfast or, more importantly, move from uh, Melbourne to Sydney. And just as well, Ray Martin appeared on Sunrise <laughs> this week. There was a, a lot of talk from uh, yeah, Seven's press office as, as about Ray this. switched networks, I don't think so, but he was, he's on the book trail at the moment. He does very well with his Ray's books and he, he, he does he, a lot of um, public speak, goes signings and stuff like that, and he was in at Seven's spruiking it on Sunrise. All right, plenty more to talk to you about next week as always, James. Thanks, Thank Brody. you. James Manning there, editor and publisher of Media Week. That's all we've got time for this week. Thanks for your company.